Hello, in this video I would like to recreate a Jonathan Snook overlapping header with CSS grid technique. Uh, please see link to original post below. Um, and let's just see how it looks. So this is Snook original um, blog post about this technique. And this is his code pen. And then let's just change the view and see how it looks full page view okay and then uh, just remove this just uh, okay so this is how it looks overlapping header with CSS grid so here he uses CSS grid and um, the pseudo element is the main constructs uh, to create this and let's see just how it behaves on resize okay as you can see there's a padding here, then padding here, and when it hits, it looks like uh, it hits the media query, so padding is removed. And this is at 600 media query, but we will see it further, okay? So, let's just try to recreate this just to understand how it works. And I already have the rules here, I'm just gonna uncomment them I just wanna don't wanna type uh, just to save some time so the uh, what we have here just our HTML document and we have a body with the div which is our container for header main and footer again header main and footer they are within the div container so each element has its class, so div has class grid, um, header class uh, grid header, and then main, and grid main, and then grid footer. Okay, let's see what's ha what happens here. Okay, so the first the first uh, rule is uh, we just target the body. We're going to uncomment this. So here we just remove some uh, default uh, browser margin, and then we give it font family sans serif. Okay, let's see how it looks. Okay, so this is how it looks now. It just, uh, there's no rules. So we just removed our margin and just gave it some font family. Okay, so next rule is, so we declare grid. As you can see, what's happening here is our class grid targets our div with the class grid. Okay, so the moment we declare display grid automatically header main and footer they become grid items and uh, uh, they call it as a um, they become grid items and they start to participate in a grid uh, formatting context okay so next rule uh, so next uh, next line in this rule is uh, grid template columns 0, 1 FR, and then a 0. And let's break this down, okay? So uh, this creates three columns, but the first and the last column has a, a 0, like a 0 size. And this is used because later when it hits the media query those columns would would change into 20 pixel and you will see it in the media query okay this is the media query you see what's happening when it hits when the screen hits min width 600 pixel this one would become this one this one would become this one when it when the screen is narrower, like less than 600, it goes back to this one. Okay. So let's see now how it looks with the media query. Okay. It doesn't, we don't, we don't have anything yet, but and this is because we haven't placed uh, items on the grid. And the next one, let's just try place items on the grid. 
this is the overlap element we'll uh, check this later but let's just uh, uncomment first this one to see okay so it's a grid header where's our grid header this is our grid header okay so this is called line based placement so basically we say here please uh, place this item with a class grid header place it on uh, between starting from column line 2 and ending column line 3 so stretch it from column line 2 to column line 3 and then grid row uh, stretch it from uh, grid row 1 to uh, sorry grid uh, line 1 grid row line 1 to grid row line 2 then we give it some background color padding and the border just to see where it sits let's see if we can see it now okay and then if we turn our let's see what it would show okay so what we said is this is our columns and what we said one moment here so grid column two two three and here we go this is line two grid column line two and then line three two to three okay so next one we have our main and comment this oops sorry just this so this is our main where's our main this is main and what we say here please place place main item from stretch it from line 2 to line 3 and then stretch it from line grid row line 2 to grid row line 4 then make it min height 50 viewport height and just we, we give it some padding and body radius okay so let's see how it looks this is our main let's see okay this is our main and not sure if you can see this so what we said is this is our lines what did we say okay grid main from 2 to 3 and then 2 to 4 let's see grid this is our main two to three and then two to four and fifty viewport height okay so it's two to three and then two to four looks like it okay so this is our main next one footer footer we already have already have here and let's just add border to the main just to see I think it's better just to see where it sits you can add border okay this is our header this is our main and footer will be this footer as you can see again line it's called line you can google it it's called line based placement and uh, this grid row grid column it's called shorthand in line based uh, placement okay so again we stretch it from two to three, line two to three and then grid row zero one uh, sorry grid row minus one what it means it's it's the last line 
in the row. So let's see here. Okay, so minus one, what it means? It means start with the last row line of the explicit grid. I have my comment here, I'm just going to copy and paste. Oops, sorry guys. So this is better. So negative one, what this specifically what this means, start we tell the browser start with last row line of the explicit grid. And what is explicit grid is the grid defined by the grid columns, a grid template columns or grid template rows properties. This is called explicit grid because there is an implicit grid and you can Google this as well. So um, let's see how it looks. Okay, so this is our footer now, but let's go back to those rules which are commented out just to see okay actually we only have one rule here snook uses uh, jonathan snook uses the is what is called pseudo element before and the way this works is because we're using before pseudo element it is automatically placed behind other elements on the on the page so let's uncomment this oh sorry i didn't do this correctly oops so grid before so we need content and then we we stretch it from first column line to the last column line and then we stretch it from first line of the row to the third line of the row okay uh, let's see how this looks You can see it here. Actually, what? Let's just change the color. Let's just change it to maybe I don't know. Orange or whatever. Orchid. Orchid. O orchid. I don't know. So. Okay. This is our. So the element, you see, it is behind this and this and this. Okay. And, but why it creates actually the effect is because like we're using the same color. So it blends into the background. You see, it's this, he is like uh, Snoke uses, Jonathan Snoke uses the same color. So whatever is 063 so we change the color and what we have we have this effect of the um, uh, what he calls overlapping header okay so let's just try resize this and see what's happening me just remove this thin okay you probably won't see the media query uh, let me see if I can just turn the query turn that thin would it oops no okay now it shows let me just remove this 
Okay, let's see. You see uh, top uh, top right corner it's showing pixels. So now we have uh, this uh, padding because we have the media query. It it inserts it makes those uh, first and the last column uh, twenty pixels. So now we're going to six hundred. boom so there's no padding so this is how it would look on the screen so 600 and less than 600 and then hits 600 so it becomes like this so that's uh, an interesting technique definitely there's lots to learn from this and um, yeah as always guys Thank you for watching.